Well, this is the Insights Channel, Steve here again. And today I thought I would show you one of the reasons why I personally, and I've said it in all my books, I personally convinced the Earth is hollow. And I'm going to show you one of the reasons why. I'm going to read you from the 22nd chapter of the book Enoch. And also I'll back that up by the new book I'm working on, the second book Enoch. I think you'll find this interesting. I would call chapter 22 of the book Enoch, Hell, Limbo, Souls. And when you think about it logically, it's more sense, there's more sense to the idea of the earth being hollow than it being solid. Scientifically speaking, it's the case. As I have mentioned in my books, why, I've explained it why, the science of it, why it's hollow, how it becomes hollow. I've already covered that many times over. So I'll just read you what this short 22nd chapter actually says from the book Enoch, or from my book Enoch Insights, the first of my Insights book, which came out in 2018. Now I've got eight Insights books and now two books on the paranormal out of the bottomless pit, one and two. So this is the first one of the eight Insights book called Enoch Insights, chapter 22. And thence I went to another place, and he showed me in the west another great and high mountain of hard rock. So here's Enoch's been taken on a trip around the earth, and this looks like he's inside the earth. And there was in it four hollow places, deep and wide and very smooth. How smooth are the hollow places, and deep and dark to look at. As I've pointed out many times to people, if the earth is solid, why is all the rest of God's creation hollow? Why is everything, you look at nature, everything around you, is hollow to some degree. God's made things hollow so you can put something inside it. I think that's the idea. That's in putting it in very simple terms. It's more practical. But anyway, then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, these hollow places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Yea, all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. Comment 1. These hollow places must be very large indeed inside the earth if they can contain all the souls of men who ever lived. You know, and talk about them billions. Comment two. Hollow places. Most people today believe that the earth is solid, as is taught since about 1950 in the science community without giving any proof whatsoever. It makes much more sense, however, that the earth is actually hollow. Why? As I said before, most things in nature are hollow in order to contain other things within themselves. The earth is stated to contain hell, paradise, Tartarus, many other lands. So, isn't it logical to deduce? The earth must, in fact, be hollow. In order to contain these other places. And you might think, well, why don't we know about that? Why is it hidden? Well, actually, there are millions of people who believe the earth is hollow today. Now, if you want to know what the truth is about any given topic, the truth is probably the exact opposite of what officially is told people. And that's a hard for, for most people to accept. Because most people don't accept that we're in a big spiritual warfare and that Satan and his devils have usurped this planet and have done for thousands of years. And that if you're going to be here, you've got to fight the evil. And you've got to start with the weapon of the Word of God. Two-edged sword. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness. The spiritual wickedness in high places. Unfortunately, I think that most people today are fast asleep, not willing to find out that they're living in a delusion world, some sort of matrix of make-believe. You need to break out of it and not listen to all the lies that are spewed out by Satan all the time through the main media and science falsely so-called and false history, false education. You name it, it's all false. 
because it doesn't teach the truth as being important. As those who rule say the truth is whatever we say it is, George Bush. That's their arrogant attitude of those who so-called rule at the moment. But they're all yielded to Satan at the present time. Fortunately for us who believe, one day Jesus can return, kick out Satan, kick out the merchants, and throw them in a bottomless pit where they belong, or hell, or the lake of fire. Give them what they deserve. Those who are destroying our planet. And I want to say, one of the reasons I'm reading this right now is because things are looking very precarious, very dangerous on our planet. Very dangerous indeed. Just really pray things don't descend back to as they were at the end of 2019, 2021. That it doesn't return. Without me saying any more. Anyway, back to the story here. The earth is stated to contain... Yes, I mentioned that. I know that most of us have probably thought that these above-mentioned places, such as paradise, hell, Tartarus, are spiritual in nature, rather than physical. However, what if they are in fact both? Part spiritual, part physical. It's like us. We're the same. We have a physical body, and we have a spirit that lives inside that body. Nothing strange, you've got two dimensions there, spiritual and physical. It's the same with the earth. Comment four. If one thinks about it seriously, we ourselves are partly physical, partly spiritual. It's been stated, stated there are many dimensions, some going up and some going down. The higher dimensions are more spiritual, the lower ones are more physical. There's three. These places have been made to receive them, or the spirits of the dead, till the day of their judgment, the great white throne judgment, about a thousand years from now, end of the millennium, or end of the golden age of Christ, till their period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. Revelation 20.13 And the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. Verse 4. I saw the spirits of the children of men who were dead, and their voice went forth to heaven and made suit. In other words, they are imploring God. And I asked Raphael, the angel was with me, I said unto him, This spirit, whose is it? Whose voice goes forth and makes suit or implores to God? Verse 5. And he answered me, saying, This is a spirit which went forth from Abel, whom his brother Cain slew. And he makes his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. Comment 5. His seed is annihilated. This would appear to be talking about Satan's seed. First John 3.12 Not as Cain. Who was, a, who was of that wicked one, Satan, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Yes, I think there's a lot more went on in that Garden of Eden than, than Eve just eating an apple, and her and Adam getting kicked out of the garden. There was something much more evil than that that happened. But anyway, we'll keep the story about the apple and Eve to the children. For those who are strong to receive it, you just need to read what the scriptures say, starting with the Apostle John, 1 John 3.12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, Satan, couldn't be more clear. In other words, he's saying that Cain, Cain was a son of Satan. How did that happen? Hmm. Well, we know in modern times about what the fallen angels did with the women on the earth. And obviously Satan's done the same thing. That's hard for people to receive, but I think it's just common sense. Just read the scriptures and you come to the right analysis, you come to the right conclusions. As I said to somebody recently, unless you're willing to have your preconceived ideas smashed to bits and your old little nice little religious ideas moulded a bit more, you won't learn anything new. Why? Because again, the religious establishment keeps people in a box. They don't give people any freedom. And I think the religious establishment is mostly run by the devil. It's not run by God. 
And they're led by the letter of the law, as the Pharisees in the time of Jesus. Who were Jesus' biggest enemies? The Pharisees, the letter of the law people, seed of Satan. I don't think it's changed. I mean, there's very few people that are actually doing what Jesus said. There's very few people in real terms living what Christ said in the Gospels. To forsake all, give up your own life, live for others. That's what he said to do. He didn't say to follow after the money, like most of the churches today, and the prosperous living doctrine. Jesus never said to do that. You want to know what it means to be a Christian? Just read the Gospels. Read what Jesus said. Live by faith. Be willing to forsake all. Pray and listen to God. Commit all things in his hands daily. And get his answers. And don't make excuses before God why you can't obey him and do what he says. That is the path to live as a disciple. It's wonderful when you can talk to Jesus, hear from Jesus, get his instructions and live by faith. It's a, it's a wonderful life. It's the best. But the opposite, like Cain, is to put in violence. Like it says, 1 John 3, 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, Satan, and slew his brother. Wherefore slew him? Because his own works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Joshua 1, 22. And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God, who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause. He was just telling Cain what would happen, because Cain said, hey, what would you do if I was to kill you? Stumb question. But Abel answered him, and he says, Well, God will require my blood from thee, should you slay me. Now, if you read the Antiquities of the Jews of Josephus, volume 2, verse 2, concerning Cain. Now, look at this description of Cain. So, obviously, he was a child of Satan. It couldn't be anything else. He augmented his household. I mean, he increased his household substance, money, with much wealth. By, look at this, raping and violence. He excited, sounds like the merchants today that rule what they do. I won't go into the details of what goes on this planet with slave traffic, etc., etc., etc. You know what's going on. You should get angry about it. You get upset about it. And God bless those people who made that recent movie about it. Mel Gibson's actors and people like that who... who who've made great movies. Now they're fighting against evil. That's what we need. We need more people standing up against the evil and saying something. What you believe in, you talk about. If you believe something, you need to talk about it. You tell others. You can't be asleep. You should give your life for what you believe in. That's a martyr. But first you start talking about things. Start telling others. But don't be asleep like so many. Look at this from Antiquities of the Jews. This is written by a, a Jewish Roman historian around about 100 years after Christ. Josephus II, about 30 years after the Diaspora, when the Israel was kicked out of Israel. Anyway, describing Cain, he augmented or increased his household substance with much wealth by raping and violence. He excited his acquaintance to procure pleasures, spoils by robbery, and became a great leader of men into wicked courses. He also introduced a change in the way of simplicity, wherein men lived before, talking pre-flood times, was the author of measures and weights, lo and behold. Was Cain the very, I said, was Cain the very first of the evil and corrupt murdering merchants, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, chapter 18? I wouldn't want to be them when God gets hold of them. 6. Verse 6. Then I asked regarding it and regarding all the hollow places why one was separated from the other. And he answered me and said unto me, These three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. Such a division has been made for the spirits of the righteous in which are there as the bright springs of water. And such has been made for Sinners, when they die and are buried in the earth, and judgment has not yet been executed on them in their lifetime. Comment 6. Four distinct places for the different types of the dead. 1. A hollow place to implore God for revenge by the righteous, and when there is also paradise inside the earth. 2. Limbo. Another place, hollow place for the undecided. 3. Hell. A hollow place for the unrepentant sinners. 
4. Lake of fire, hollow place for the very wicked. Verse 8. Here their spirits shall be set apart in his great pain, to the great day of judgment and punishment, and torment of those who curse forever, and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. Comment 7. This last verse seems to be talking about the very worst spirits, who, like Satan, will end up being cast into the lake of fire. As mentioned before, cursing was originally started by the fallen angels, and those who curse and swear do it by the power of bad spirits or demons, whether people know it consciously or not. Verse 9. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those whom disclosures concern their destruction when they were slain in the day of the sinners. Comma 8. A special hollow place for all the souls that have been slain who implore God for vengeance. There's another verse just like that in Revelation 6 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them who were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Revelation 6 10. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Verse 10. And such has been made for the spirits of the men who were not righteous but sinners, who were complete in transgression, and that of the transgression, they shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in their judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. Comment 9. Sounds like a very great multitude of unsaved peoples who will not live during the coming millennium, but will be awakened after it at the great final judgment of the white, great white throne judgment. They will not be judged at the coming wrath of God, because they had already died in ages gone past. Revelation 25. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Finally, verse 11. Then I blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be my Lord, the Lord of righteousness. Obviously talk about Jesus, who rules forever. Written 5,000 years ago. Now I'm just going to read you one verse finally from the second book of Enoch, which I found really intriguing. Saw this recently. Look what it says here in the second book of Enoch, chapter 66, that I'm currently working on for a new book. Although it's only got it's 37 pages to this book, but it's actually chock a block full of good stuff. So here's verse 5, chapter 66, verse 5 from second book of Enoch. If you look to heaven, the Lord is there. If you take thought of the seas deep and all the under earth, the Lord is there. Right? So that again is talking about the under earth. Now I know some of you, some of you would argue, and I would in the past, that the under earth is just a place where hell is and the lake of fire and paradise is mentioned by Jesus talking about the story of Lazarus and the rich man. Hell, side by side, with paradise. But I think the earth is, is a lot more sophisticated than you think. Just in the way that we ourselves ha have two dimensions in us. We have our physical body, and we have a spirit inside it. Well, I think it's the same with the earth. Same with the earth, too. The earth is hollow, so you can put something inside it. God, in his wisdom, has made it hollow, so he can contain a lot of dimensions and things down there. If it was just solid, like you're taught by science so-called, as is put in First Timothy 6.20, science falsely so-called, science that was really geared by Satan, if you believe that nonsense, then is it, what would you do with a planet that is just solid all the way through and just full of fire? Do you know you can prove scientifically that if the Earth was solid all the way through and full of fire... The gravity would be so great, we couldn't even live on it. The gravity would, would destroy us. You, you can prove things scientifically. And also you can, as I've mentioned many times before, if you, those of you who have done pottery, if you study how a person makes any kind of vessel, you have a spinning wheel, and you have a lump of clay, and you put your hands on the clay, on top of the spinning wheel, and your hands are forced apart as a vessel starts appearing, and what's the first thing you notice? The clay becomes hollow inside with a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom, rather like our earth. Same thing. And also, by doing observations, 
NASA and many other sources have found out that all the planets out there are also hollow. They just don't tell people. And also they have holes at the poles. These are things you can prove by science very easily. You can even prove it on Google Map. Google Map hides it all the time, but they also show holes at the poles. So there are, scientifically you can prove the Earth is hollow. And for many reasons it's hollow. And like I said, God in his great wisdom has made it hollow so that you can put plenty of stuff inside. And in other places, as I've pointed out before, in my other books, Esdras Insights, a new book, Ezra in five of the 16 chapters mentions the earth's hollow. Why? God says, I plant souls into the womb of the earth from time to time. Well, what's the first thing you know about a womb? It's hollow. So something can grow inside it like a baby with plenty of water. Well, the earth is the same. But it's something you have to investigate for yourself in order to be convinced of it. But I think what you have to realize right away is you can't trust in what you are spoon-fed. Most of what people are spoon-fed is not true. It's false. It's incomplete. Like I've told you before, I went to university, studied science, electronics and maths, thermodynamics, physics. I liked it. I liked science. But it was years later I discovered that all the science is incomplete. Why are they incomplete? Because they're only talking two-dimensionally. They're talking not taking the spirit world into consideration. They're not taking other dimensions into consideration, which affect this dimension. Then it's a whole different ball game, a whole different picture. But I encourage people, don't be narrow-minded because of religion. Don't be like so many. I'd say so many religionists, even many Christians, they're just like somebody on the beach who dabs their big toe in the water, the sea, too afraid by everything they've been told in the churches and religion to go swimming in the sea. So they just dabble their little toe, get it wet, a little bit wet. Oh, that was nice. But they don't make an effort, jump in the sea. I'll tell you what happened. If you jump in the sea of the bigger waters, spiritual waters, you're going to have a lot of adventures. You're going to see there's lots of creatures on the sea. You're going to see that God's got a whole world under the sea, cities under the sea. You're going to see fantastic things around you. I'm talking about spiritually here. But if you're too afraid to get your toe in the water, like I've seen with so many churches, oh, I've visited churches, I've been to many churches, but I find that most of them don't believe anymore. Most, most churches do not believe in prophecy. They don't believe that God speaks to his people anymore. They don't want their God to speak to people, because then they wouldn't need the churches. They wouldn't need the pastors. If you teach people all they need is God's word, which is the truth. They just need God's word. And sometimes they need somebody to encourage them, to know how to get things from God. But that's what we as Christians should teach others. Teach others to teach others what you teach them. Teach them the importance of the Word of God. Because I'm so ashamed, I'm so shocked that the stats today are that 70% of the pastors in the United States do not follow a biblical following. They do not teach people about the Bible anymore. If you don't teach the Bible, there's no point being a Christian. It's pointless. The Bible is our foundation. The Bi I, I mean, I do other things myself. I know I teach books on the Apocrypha, but I want to state to my audience, the Apocrypha books that I am working on, they all used to be in a King James Bible, or a lot of them did, until 1885. Why were they taken out? Huh? I'll tell you why they're taken out. Because somebody didn't like the content. Somebody didn't like the controversial content of the kind of things I talk about. Where do I get my information from what I say in my audios and that? I get it from the Apocrypha books. The Apocrypha are incredible. They're fantastic. Still find them in the um, Catholic Bible and the Orthodox Bible. But I think it's a shame people don't have the Apocrypha in the Protestant Bible. Because ever since it was taken out, it's been seriously neglected. And you won't find anything contrary in the Apocrypha books. You'll just find it fills in the gaps and gives greater descriptions and greater information. And I especially like the visions and the dreams and the prophecies that God gave to his prophets. That's the value I find in it, and applying it to today. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. I do encourage everybody to get my new book, which is Ezra's Insights, which is actually three books in one. It's got the two Apocrypha books of 1st and 2nd Ezra's, and it's also got 4,000 years of world history from creation to Christ, something I put together, compilation. 
So thanks for listening. I'd like everybody to, I'd like to encourage people to. Oh, and my two out of the bottomless pit, which are paranormal books about the supernatural. You can buy them from me, and get them cheaper, if you write to me at Stephen with a P8, or you can get them from Amazon. There you get those paperbacks or on Kindle as well. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great day.